Well, right behind me, you guys can see the beautiful stand of winter rye that I have coming back. This was fall planted rye and it's mid June when I'm filming this video now. Uh, in the video today, I'm just gonna show you guys the incredible weed suppressing power that this winter rye has on my food plot. And that's really important to me because the, the more years that I do this, the uh, food plotting, um, the more I'm just trying to minimize the amount of time I gotta spend at it. I am married with, with a few kids and so we're really busy in the summer. Um, I just don't have time to be back here tilling this, nor do I wanna be tilling my soil a whole lot if I don't have to. And, and I don't wanna be using herbicide if I don't have to either. You know, I'm not totally against it, but if I can find ways to minimize it, why not, right? So uh, that's what's so cool about this winter rye. Now it's, it's not perfect. I'll show you guys some weak areas where I do have some weed competition coming back. But for the majority of my food plot, um, this winter rye just does an incredible job keeping those weeds at bay with its allelopathic property. So basically that means it just it has the ability to suppress germination and growth of those real um, competitive weed seeds. All right, so I'm on the edge of my rye plot right now and I'm just gonna pan down in here to show you guys what the soil looks like. It's like a chunk of red pine bark right there. I got an oak leaf that blew in. Otherwise, it's just really nice um, open exposed soil here and just nothing but winter rye root stems in here. This is what the vast majority of my plot looks like right now. So I am in really sandy soil. Maybe you can tell that that surface is kind of dried out a little bit, but that that soil is just right there. It's completely exposed right now. Um, if I just pick a few random spots in here to drop down in, we will see some weeds. Let me find some in here. Like here's some growing right here. You can see that's not winter rye. So, you know, over the majority of this plot, it's it's just incredible how well it has kept weeds at bay. Just to drive this point home and, and show you guys the incredible difference of rye versus no rye, this area behind me right here, all this grass you see, this was a brassica plot last year and I tilled this two weeks before I tilled this winter rye. So these were tilled at almost the exact same time last summer, again, just two weeks apart. So that mechanical tillage is what I was using to set back my grass and weed growth. I, did, I planted brassicas and then just let this go back fallow this spring, haven't touched it. Um, neither side, the, the rye or the grass side has been chemically controlled at all. I haven't sprayed any herbicide on either side. This area, this spring, I just let go back uh, to grass. And the reason for that is I'm actually starting a pine plot screen along here. So I'm establishing a bunch of spruce and pines, but um, it's just unbelievable. I mean, this whole area behind me here is completely taken over by grass again. Um, just the field grass that was here when I bought the property through all my, my years of tilling this now, this grass never truly goes away. There's little pieces of that root system that stay in the ground. And it's just amazing how this has just been swallowed back up by grass till two weeks before this side of the plot. And there's almost not a blade of grass in this winter rye side. So that just shows you, again, no chemical control on either side. It just shows you the incredible difference that that winter rye has. I, I'm honestly blown away by this. I mean, very few to no weeds over here compared to a carpet. I mean, I could mow this with my lawnmower and it'd, it'd be a nice lawn over here starting to come up. If you're wondering what that light green stuff is inside my electric fence, that's my buckwheat. Uh, I'll do a video on that later, but that's my buckwheat smother crop. That also suppresses weeds really well. But um, anyways, this winter rye, you can see the difference here. Rye on that side of me and grass and weeds on this side of me. Um, that allelopathic property with the winter rye is a real thing. Um, I've proven it here on my plot. A lot of those egg extension documents, like I say, it's, it's kind of hard to get a feel for it at, at an industrial egg level, but even on a small scale like this, um, it does work. So let's take a look. I wanna show you guys some of the weak spots in the winter rye, um, just to give you a sense. You know, it, it's not completely foolproof or completely perfect. Um, there are, a couple of spots here. Um, this is one where 
it just came back sort of weak, the winter rye, and you can see that I'm getting a lot of milkweed coming back in and, and just other various broadleaf and, and weed competition. So again, this method isn't completely foolproof. Um, you know, does this mean I'll never have to use herbicide again? No, it, and I've never used herbicide on either side. But does this mean that I'll never have to till it again? No. Um, it, but it but it can significantly reduce the amount of times you need to do either of those things for weed control. And then this gives me options, this rye too. I can come out here, I can let the seed go to viability if I want, um, get through the dough stage, become viable, and then I can just come out here and mow this basically with a riding lawnmower um, and then drag it with a tine drag or just really lightly disc it and that uh, volunteer rye or those viable rye seeds will start this whole process over. Um, on part of this, I'm gonna be keeping it pure rye later this summer. And then on the other half, I am gonna be doing a mix of oats, radish, winter peas, clover. I'll, I'll show you guys videos on how that works out for me, but this gives me options for, I can roller crimp this over my fall planted crop, or I could just, like I say, come mow it and drag it, um, however I wanna do it, but um, either way, if you are going to um, go this route, um, just make sure that you catch this and you terminate it before those seeds become viable if you don't want rye in your fall plot. When I first planted this rye, I did lightly disc it in. Again, I'm in such sandy soil. I've had spotty success by just hand broadcasting these great big oat or rye or radish seeds on top of the soil. It'll work if we get great consistent rain. If it dries out at all, it doesn't work. If you're in clay or, or heavier soils, you'll probably have a lot better germ rates than I will in this sand. But So I lightly disc my rye in. I did plant this field at 300 pounds per acre, which I know is higher than what most folks will do, but I, I don't layer rye or anything. I just like to get it all on the ground at once at the right time. Um, there's two reasons I go really heavy on the rye. Um, number one is I think the deer just like eating a carpet of rye more than sporadic sparse little sprigs here and there. Um, I, I don't have any way to prove that or, or you know empirical evidence or data that that says that it just makes sense to me and the different rates I've planted it at the deer seem to pound this rye a lot harder when it's really thick and a lush carpet of it coming up versus the random sprigs. The other reason is just for this for weed suppression the next year. Um, there is a point of diminishing return if you go too crazy with your rye seeding rates and plant it too heavy. Um, you can get lodging and you can um, get it so heavy to where it'll start to choke itself out. But at least um, what I've done at 300 pounds per acre behind me, uh, I'm not there on either one of those um, scenarios. But again, I'm in sand. So if you're in real heavy soils, think about that seeding rate. You may wanna play with it and slowly bring it up to that 300 pounds per acre. Um, and, and find what's right for germ rates on your soil. I'm not getting full germination because it's so sandy here. So um, that's my seeding rate on this. And again, that was planted first week of August last summer, this rye behind me. I also have to plant a little bit earlier because of where I'm at, north central Minnesota. The uh, fall comes early, winter comes early up here. Our average first frost date is September 19th. So we're colder than most of the country. So. I'm planting this rye a little bit earlier than folks just to get enough tonnage so that the deer don't eat it down to the dirt by the time uh, hunting season rolls around. And, and we have a high deer population around here, so this gets whaled on really hard in the fall. So for those couple reasons, I planted that, that first week of August seems to be kind of the sweet spot for me. So um, anyways, that does it for the video. I think this demonstrates how incredible the weed suppression power of this rise. If you guys like the video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. Think about subscribing if you'd like to get more videos like this, and I will catch you guys on the next one.